Today I'm going to show you how I mix drums completely in the box with plugins. Then we're going to take those same drums and we're going to mix them on my console with outboard gear. So first off, if we look right here, I have the drums that I recorded. Inside kick, outside kick, snare top, snare bottom, rack tom, floor tom, overhead left and right, hi-hat, mono room, and then a stereo room. This blue track right here is a VCA that just controls the group of drums, all right? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play these for you, and you're gonna hear that they don't sound very good because they're not mixed. It's just how they were recorded. It's right up, every, nothing's panned, it's up the center. So let's hear them real quick. The first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the volume level of all these tracks and the panning. So let's do that right now. So I'm gonna take the kick drum and let's solo it. I just lowered that down 4 dB. I'm going to take the outside kick, and just from past experience, and knowing how I like my drums, I'm going to go through this really fast, and I'm going to put them about 2 dB lower than the inside kick. Snare, same thing. See how it's hot? It's hitting over zero right there. We're going to bring it down. Under snare mic. Now, all the panning for the kick and the snare, I'm going to leave up the center. Now, we're going to move on to these toms right here, the rack tom and the floor tom. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the floor tom, and I'm going to put it on the left side, and the rack tom, I'm going to put it on the right side. Because when you're looking at a drummer, the rack tom is usually more on the right, and the floor tom is more on the left when you're looking at it from the viewer's perspective, not the drummer's perspective. I'm going to take these tracks and I'm going to lower them down to about 8.2. Then I'm going to pan the floor tom about 60% to the left and the rack tom about 40% to the right. All right. The next track is the stereo overheads right here. And I'm going to take that down to about 12 dB. Hi-hat, I'm going to pan that about 30% to the right. Again, Viewer perspective, I'm going to lower that about 7 dB. Mono room, I'm going to leave up the center, and I'm going to put that at negative 14.8. And then the stereo room, which is right here, I'm going to hard pan that left and right. So let's hear it up the center. Here's the stereo room. All right, that's my hardwood floors in the other room there. I'm going to hard pan that left and right, and now let's hear it. All right, and now I'm going to bring that down about, again, 14.8 dB. How do I know these numbers where I want them? History and mixing for a very long time. I know where I want my drums to be in a mix. So now all we did was set levels and adjust the panning. So let's hear where it's at now. So it's getting a little better, but it's nowhere near where we want it to be. So we're going to continue on here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do really fast. I'm going to pull up two auxiliary tracks. I'm going to make them stereo, and I like to color coat my tracks. So I'm just going to make them the color I like them. Yellow is going to be my verb, and orange will be my drum bug. So I just set up two auxiliary stereo tracks, and one I am going to assign to bus one and two, and the other I'm going to assign to bus three and four, and I'm going to show you why. Now I'm going to go through, and I'm going to set up an auxiliary bus of the drums. So I'm going to take one and two, bus one and two, and I'm going to go through again and basically did what I did with the volume and panning on this little auxiliary bus, but I'm going to do it lower. So the kick, I'm going to 
have it 4.8 up the center. The outside kick I'm going to have at 6.2. Same thing. The snare, top of the snare 4.8, snare bottom 6.2. We're at the toms. So the toms I want lower. I'm going to put those at like 8.8. .8. Again, I'm going to pan the floor tom to the left and the rack tom to the right. Mono overhead up the center to the lower, 6.2. And then the stereo overhead. Go 17 to 6. All right. And our panning is right and our volume is right. And we got those bust one and two. All right. Now I'm going to start adding some plugins that I want to hear now. That's why I brought up these auxiliary tracks. Because one, I want to put a drum bus compressor, and that's going to be the SSL comp. And I got a plugin that I made called Riot Drum Bus. I'm going to pull that up. And then for the verb, I'm going to pull up my little plate. And I got a plug-in for that called Riot Great Plate. And these are settings that I already have made based off past mixes. And then as I go through this and I'm hearing it, I'll tweak them for this mix. Okay, so now we're going to hear this now with the drum bus compressor and the little plate reverb. <laughs> All right, so now we got a little bit of space in there. We got our volumes right. They're not too high. They're not clipping. If you get one thing out of this video as a new mixer, let it be this. Take your volumes and turn them down. This is digital. You're not trying to beat a, a, a fuzzy buzzing sound in the background from tape. Don't worry about that. Take your volumes down, all right? You want plenty of headroom in there. That's what's going to make your mix sound not all pushed up in someone's face back like the pros right we're all trying to be like the pros here all right so again no plugins on the individual tracks but we're going to add those in a second so let's just hear this again so just hearing that i could tell that i want my hi-hat uh down a little bit it's a little bit too much for me so i'm going to pull that down i'm going to pull it down on the track itself and then the auxiliary i'll pull that down just a tad. Now let's hear it. Much better. Much, much, much better. Okay. So let's see what our drum bus compressor is doing here. SSO comp. I love this compressor. All right, here we go. Less than 4 dB. A little bit under 4 dB. All right. All right. So we're good there. Now, we're going to go through, and I'm going to sprinkle some plugins on the individual drum tracks. So for kick and snare, I use the SSL channel strip. And I mainly use it for its gate. So if I go to kick, and I pull up my setting for the kick drum, you'll see that the EQ didn't move. Now that's the inside kick. Now let's hear the inside kick without this plugin, and then with it. What did it do? Really not much. Just tighten it up a little bit with the gate. All right, now I'm going to go to the snare top. Same thing, SSL channel strip. And I'm going to pull up my preset, Riot Snare. Boom. Added a little bit of top end on the 8K. And then, again, some gate. Now we're going to go to the toms. Again, SSL channel strips. And I'm going to do the floor tom. I have presets set up already. And then the rack tom. I'm going to go to the overhead, stereo overhead. Ooh, listen to that kick and snare. It's getting punchier, isn't it? Now, the overheads, listen again. I know what to do with those. I am going to come over here. I'm going to go grab an EQ. It is going to be a great EQ. It is actually the Fab Filter Pro Q3. And I am going to go to my presets again and Riot Overheads. Bam. Here we go. Now listen to this. What that just did was scooped out a little bit of the low mids and added a little bit of the 451 overheads that I'm miking this kit with. Just added, a, it exposed the top end that those grab in a recording, 
right? It just exposed a little bit of that top end, AKG top end, which is great. And then it scooped out some low mids. Beautiful. All right, we're going to move on to the hi-hat. In the hi-hat, I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to go to the Renaissance EQ, and I am simply going to high pass at around 95. That's it for the hi-hat. We're going to hear the mono room. All right, now we're going to grab the decapitator, and we're going to add some sizzle underneath. So... Okay, so what that is going to do is it's going to add some energy under the kit. So let's hear the whole kit, and then I'm going to bypass this decapitator. Here we go. All right, now I'm going to tuck it back into the mix. So let's hear the stereo room mics really fast. All right, let me pull up two things. I'm gonna pull up an EQ. I'm gonna do a little bit of a high pass at, let's just say 40 Hertz. Then I'm gonna grab the DBX 160 compressor. Let's see what we can do with these. All right, now let's see what that does with the entire kit. We took 20 minutes and we got some pretty good sound and drums in the box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these tracks, we're going to spread them across my console, mix it on the board, and add some outboard. Now that we have the tracks marked to what they're going to be, I'm just going to assign them from Pro Tools onto my board. So the kick drum is going to go to channel 1, outside kick, channel 2, outside kick, is it's the sub kick mic, right? Snare top, channel 3, snare bottom, channel 4, comms, 5 Six. All right, so now I'm going to do basically the same thing I did in the box, but I'm going to do it in real life on the console. I'm going to go through and adjust levels and panning. Let me mention that the levels that I set in Pro Tools, I left them where they were at because I don't want to be coming out of my converters hot either. I don't mind being at a low level. I could always boost and gain things up if I feel the volume is low. Most times I don't feel like the volume is low, okay? So I left the levels where they were in the box. But now I'm going to go through and I'm going to start adjusting levels like I did in the box, but now on my console and panning. Also, it's important to remember that I don't need my keyboard now. I don't need to be mousing around. I'm just going to be doing everything pretty swiftly in the real world, all right? The only thing I need my keyboard for right now is to press play for the loop. And here we go. And it's that fast. The levels are now set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these individual drum tracks and I'm going to bust them through my board out to an API 2500 and maybe some EQs. Let's try it now. So I'm going to grab out of my drum bus into the API 2500, out of it into a pair of 550As. So here is my drum bus now. 
I'm going to make sure that's hard panned left and right because I want a nice spread over my drum buzz. Now we're going to dial in the API 2500 and a pair of 550 AEQs. Here we go. All right, I added some punch. I added some little bit of weight to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, this is my drum bus parallel, and now I'm gonna tuck it in to the mix a tad bit. I'll, I will continue to adjust this throughout the mix, but let's just do that now. So now I have the drum bus tucked in under the mix. I'm going to play it, and then I'm going to mute it out, and then put it back in so you can hear it with and without it. Now we're going to adjust the reverb. So I have the reverb coming out of an auxiliary bus to channels 27 and 28 right here. So I have a plug-in bust out to my console. All right? The same one I used in the box, I'm using on my console. I'm just putting it through a pair of channels that are hard panned left and right. So we're going to get a nice reverb spread off this. All right? So let's do that now. Now I just added a little bit of that verb, all right? So we're going to hear it. I am going to play the drums with the verb and the drum bus. Then I'm going to mute these tracks, and then we'll put them back in to see what they're doing. Here we go. Notice how in the box and the console, I treated the drum bus before I treated the individual tracks. The reason why I did that is because the drum bus, I'm adding compression and EQ, all right? If I did my individual tracks first, I wouldn't be hearing the compression and EQ on the drum bus. So then when I added the drum bus EQ, I could potentially add too much compression and EQ on my individual tracks, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing is I'm globally treating the drums with compression and EQ, then going back and just putting in what I think I need for the kick and snare. And right now, I don't think I need much. I'm hearing punch and weight, and that's what a console adds. Every channel of this board, every input and output is going through multiple transformers and amplifier circuits. So what's happening is, you're adding weight, width, dimension, and punch. So let's hear the whole kit again. We're going to add some compression to the overheads. I want to hear them come up a little bit, be a little bit more even, and then we'll add some kick and snare compression and maybe some EQ. So let's do that now. For the kick drum, we're going to go with the DBX 160VU. Out of the 160VU into a 5 50 EQ, all right, and then we're going to return it back into the channel. For the snare, we're going to come on a channel 3, snare top, into a distressor, out of the distressor, into a 550 EQ, back into the channel strip. 
when I patch in outboard gear to a channel strip, it is pre-fader. So what that means is it's inserted at a point in the signal chain where my level doesn't affect the compression and EQ. And that's very important. And that's when a lot of summing mixers don't work with mixing with outboard gear. Think about this. If my fader affected my compression, that means anytime I went to automate anything, I wouldn't be making the track louder. I would be adding more compression. I'd be hitting the compressor harder and in fact leveling it out more and cutting out off more transients on the top. So just think about that because that's what a lot of professionals understand and know and we need to understand that too. That where your compressor and EQ is inserted in the signal chain is very important. Another thing I want to mention that most times I'm going into the compressor first then the EQ. So what I'm going to do is I am going to Solo the kick drum, this is the inside kick, and we're going to hear this. I'm going to mute the auxiliary tracks. The DBX160 VU is pretty much already set up for a kick drum. I, I use it on the kick drum a lot. Now we're going to dial in the 550 EQ. That sounds good to me. Let's hear the snare drum. Snare drum is going into a distressor, then a 550 EQ. Let's dial in that distressor. All right, so the snare drum, since I added this, this stressor, it sort of added a brightness that I heard in there. So instead of boosting like I normally do with outboard EQ, if I'm going to cut, I'm, I like to get surgical with plugins. But I actually reduced some 400. I pulled it out of there. So let's hear the inside kick and the snare together now that they have compressors and EQs. Let's hear that in the mix. I'm going to have to pull them back because anytime you add compression and you boost EDQ, you are boosting level. Okay, so let's hear it in the mix. All right, so I just had to back them off a little bit because they were a little bit too loud for me. Now what I want to do is add a uh, compression, a stereo compressor to the overheads and sort of bring them up. And then we'll hear what we need, if we need anything for the drum room mics, all right? Now remember, those plugins that I had on the tracks before this, I took them off. I don't have the DBX160 VU on the stereo drums anymore, all right? I took that off. We're using outboard gear now, all right? So let's add compressors to these stereo overheads. First, we'll hear them soloed out. And I hear some unbalance here. I hear the right side a little heavier than the left on these stereo drum room mics. We will compensate for that with the compressors. So what I'd like to do is this. We're going to come out of 7 and 8 into the Chandler Germaniums. And I'll tell you why I'm picking the Chandler Germs in a second. Now let's dial them in.
The reason why I like the Chandler Germaniums is because it has a built-in parallel wet-dry feature on it. And what that feature does is allow me to add the compression wetness along with the original signal dryness as much as I want at any ratio. And that's why the germs are awesome. And I picked them for the overhead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull down the overheads and I'm going to tuck them in where I think they should be based off what I hear on the whole drum mix. Here we go. They added a bit of aggressiveness, so I'm going to make it a little bit more dry. Let me hear this. Wow. Notice how those overheads just sit even now. There, it's, they doesn't seem as lopsided as they were before, and it's just an even overhead symbols. Everything sounds more even. Listen to this. Chandler germs are amazing compressors, all right? They do so much. They are so powerful. You could use them on your drum bus mix your overheads your kick your snare your guitars i use them for guitars a lot vocals you name it the chandler germaniums are amazing compressors on everything including your whole mix you could run you could use them as mix bus compressors the reason why is because that wet dry feature that parallel wet dry feature makes it so powerful those compressors are just awesome i absolutely love my chandler germs all right absolutely love them and you just seen what they just did. Amazing. All right, we're going to move on to the stereo room mics. Let's solo those out. Seem kind of dull, kind of lifeless compared to what we just heard with the overheads and everything, right? So let's pick a compressor and bring them up to life a little bit. Right? And maybe a pair of EQs if we wanted to. Or should I use the EQs on the board? Sure, I could do that. So we're going to come out of 11 and 12 into the Fatso. Out of the Fatso, back into 11 and 12. Again, I am inserting this compressor pre-fader. So the fader move does not affect the compression. All right? So let's hear where we're at now with this Fatso. All right, that's the compression I want to hear right there. And let me just add in some EQ here on the console. Let's tuck that in the mix. added some liveliness now i feel like we're in a good spot with these drums what do we need to do now that we added compression eq and all this stuff we need to refocus and listen to the overall drums and adjust and balance where we want everything to be right now i'm sitting in a position where i'm capturing the phantom image and what that means is both my speakers are the same distance apart from each one of my ears i am completing the triangle so when i am looking at my screen in between my speakers, I could see the kick and the snare. Anything panned up the center, I could see it. It sounds like it's coming from behind my monitor, meaning my iMac, all right? And that's called the phantom image when you get your speakers lined up right like that, all right? So let's hear this and adjust.
at this point, I want to say thank you guys for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.